I saw some parameters to let me limit resource consumption in a PDB, but they do not work. This seems a bad miss by Oracle. And I thought that's a bit strange. And, and so my response was, well, we didn't miss. And I went back and forth with this customer a bit, you know, a bit more often. And it's interesting, they had actually said to me, yep, we're trying to get this working and we've seen this stuff about PDB level controls, but they simply don't work. So after a bit of back and forth, we worked out what the problem was. And I thought I'd show you a demo of why they appear not to work sometimes and how to um, you know, actually see them in action. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to a 19C database, which is actually running on a different machine in my home here. So it'll take a little while to connect. But what we're going to do is this is what the customer was seeing. The parameters they were interested in was one called max IOPS. And there's also, also one called max megabits per second. Two parameters to limit the amount of IO resource usage in your database. If you're using something like Exadata, we have a complete component called IO resource control. But for simple systems, you can use these things to limit IOs. But they saw this. They say, oh, you can't set it in memory. And that message seems to suggest, oh, there's often in it parameters like this. Maybe it needs to be set at SP file level and then they bounce the database. So they try that and they get the same problem. Now, here's the key thing. Even though this person sent to me, I've read about these PDB limits and you know we've tried them and they don't work. When I asked them to run the following command, select name from $3 PDBs, they got no rows selected. This is a non-container database, as was theirs. And I fully acknowledge, even though we've been pushing people to move to container databases, there's a huge amount of people out there still running non-container databases. So this is what happens. You can't run those facilities on the non-container databases, the old style databases. You can effectively get the same thing if you're prepared to use the conventional resource manager, the DBMS resource manager package, which sets up you know, resource plans, consumer groups, etc. But these simple parameters aren't available in a non-container database. So that answers the question for this person as to why they couldn't see it. Let's actually now look at in action and see what the benefit is. To do this, I'm going to create a table here called T. And it's just basically 50,000 random rows, but you can see I've set percent free equals 99. What that's going to give me is probably one row per block because percent free 99 means I can only fit almost the barest minimum of data in every single block. So even though it's only got 50,000 rows, it's going to be about 50,000 blocks. And every time you read a row, you're going to have to read a block. I'm going to put an index on that table on the primary key. And what that means is every time I do a primary key lookup on a random value, it will probably have to read a random block which means plenty of physical IO. So let's flush out the buffer cache so nothing's in memory. Let's connect as Scott Tiger and let's do a test. I'm gonna run 50,000, I'm not sure why I did 49,999, but 50,000 random IOs. And because I'm using DBMS random, every time I do a read, I'm plucking a different random value and each one of those random values match to a single row on a single block. Therefore, I'm doing about 50,000 IOs and it took about 8.7 seconds. Let's connect to this again. Let's now throttle it down. So if I did 50,000 IOs in 8.7 seconds, that's what, that's about eight, 9,000 IOs per second. Excuse my bad maths. So we're going to throttle it down. We're going to say this PDB can only do 2,500 per second. Flush out the buffer cache and we run the same test. So without any limitation, we could do it in about 8.7 seconds. Normally on this machine, it takes about five seconds, but we got Zoom running and we're recording the meeting and all that kind of stuff. But now we can see by throttling it down, we've gone from 8.7, we've pushed it out just that little bit to 10 seconds. We've told the database, you're not allowed to exceed 2,500 IOs per second. And the question is, why would you want to do this? Why would you want to artificially stop your database from being able to do the work it wants to do? Let's look at why this might be an issue. Let me reset the max IOPS back to zero, which means unlimited IOs. That doesn't mean no IOs, that means unlimited IOs. One thing I should stress is in the docs, it says, we recommend you never set this to below 100. About 100 IOs per second is what a average running idle database might need because you've got you know, your control file and checkpoint, all these background processes. So if you set it to below 100, you're getting into that realm where the database itself is going to struggle to do IO, not such a good thing. So the docs say never go below 100. If you set to zero, it means unlimited. So what I've got now is two PDBs. Now I'm going to see why I might want to do this. So I'm getting session two ready. So session PDB B, I've got PDB 21A, PDB 21B. PDB 21B is also going to have the exact same setup here. A table called T, percent free 99, 50,000 rows with an index on it. 
I'm going to flush out the buffer cache and that's, I'm going to connect to Scott Tiger. So this one's ready to run the same benchmark. We get session one ready to go. It's going to do the same 40,000. Now I need to go to session two and start session two. And this is why we might want to do some session throttling. You'll have to take some of these numbers with a grain of salt because this is a local machine running on NVMe. So I probably need to actually have a whole stack of sessions running to really throttle back the performance. But what I've done here is this one, I did 10 times the amount of load work to actually really smash my system. And my aim was to slow this down because the database is working so hard. It didn't really slow down. That's the, the price of having a very fast uh, SSD running in this machine. Please take my word for it. The idea is if I had hundreds of sessions running in PDB21A, then if they're all smashing away at the IO subsystem, then maybe PDB21B, which might be a much more important PDB, is getting slowed down its IO because of, you know, we call it the noisy neighbor system. Um, in this case, we our yeah, session one wasn't so noisy. But let's see if we can improve things. So I go back to PDB21A and I think you're too aggressive. You're hurting PDB21B. So I'm going to slow you down. You get 1500 IELTS per second only. Flush out the buffer cache, clear the screen. Let's start up session two. And then this one's going to do much less work now. And so session two, in theory, will run much faster. Um, it was running pretty much at speed anyway. But still, we went from 8.7 down to 7.96 because this session over here has been dramatically throttled down to 1500 IOs per second. Whereas before it was doing 50,000 IOs in about 8.7 seconds, you can see now we've plunked it right back down to 18 seconds. So you get the idea of what's going on. Hope that explains why it, you might get the appearance that it's not available to you. That's because it doesn't run in container, non-container environments. It's only available for pluggable databases, which makes sense. And now we get an idea of, of what the usage is. It's pluggables only and it's all about making sure that one pluggable doesn't get starved out of resources from another. It's important to note that this is unlike CPU utilization when it comes to resource management. In Resource Manager, most parts of the Oracle database, if you say limits on CPU, you're only allowed 40% of the CPU allocation. Most of the time in most resource profiles in the Oracle database, if the machine is quiet and you're in a, a, an environment where you're allowed 40% of the CPU, and you start smashing the system, you get 100. And people go, oh, that, yeah, something's broken, something's broken. 40% normally means if the machine is under duress, I'll guarantee this person gets 40% and no more. And similarly, you know, the other people might get 60%. For CPU management, what normally happens is most of our resource manager profiles, it's if the machine is absolutely tapped out, then we're controlling who gets the percentage of which resources. With max IOPS here and max megabytes per second at the pluggable level, this is different. This is even if there's no one else in the system, if you set your limit to say 200 IOPS, that's all you're going to get. You can think of this as the IO equivalent of the instance caging facility we have in databases as well, which sets an upper limit on CPU. So it's subtly different from the kind of CPU management we have in Resource Manager, which pretty much lets everyone have everything and, and just make sure that everyone gets an appropriate measure. So hopefully that makes sense. Thank you.